from the get-go, I was like, I'm pretty sure that's not how this works, because I've never heard of a snake killing itself on anything like that before. Uh, welcome to episode 36 of Those Muckrakers. I'm Pete. And I'm Pat. And I don't feel very funny today. Well, I mean, we all have um, bad days. For instance, I know one person today who's having a particularly terrible day. His or her name is America, and um, shit be sucking right now. Yeah, um, well, what's really cool is uh, I wanted to, to read you some quotes, because uh, I'm actually I'm teaching, I'm teaching uh, the American Revolution right now. And uh, I'm reading this stuff, and I go, you know what? We've rebelled over less, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, revolution, you say. Well, that sounds positively uncivil. Or well, let's uh, let me let me let me give you this quote real quick because this is this is very okay. interesting. Um, this comes from the Declaration of Independence, and I thought it was particularly poignant today. Uh, it says um, the uh, it's it's a history of repeated injuries and unlawful seizures, having the direct object of establishing an absolute tyranny over these states. Uh, yeah. You know, um, here are the facts. Uh, he has obstructed the administration of justice. Uh, he has made judges dependent on his will alone. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislatures um, for protecting them by mock trial from punishment for murders. Uh, he cut off our trade with all parts of the world. He imposed taxes on us without our consent. He deprived us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury and in every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. Yep. What's bothering and surprising to me is how many of these uh, apply to our character, our character, our, our president and our government right now? A, what, what was the king's name during the Revolutionary War? Uh, um, king George the Third. George, yeah. Can you imagine King George going, It's all fake news, people. Okay, there's no tea tax. All right, I sent them tea out of my own goodwill, and they threw it in the harbor anyway. Sad. Yeah, I mean, like, even down to the cutting off trade with these stupid tariffs. No, no, nobody has better trade practices than me, okay? They were treating us very unfairly. So what I did was I renegotiated the deal okay i have a really big a brain all right everyone says so especially china and the indians because we still called them that in this year okay sad well what's happening right now that's like got everybody upset is so last time we talked yeah. in, talked in link about um we talked the, uh, the rapist the 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 alleged rapist nominee uh, brett canava you know, I do worry about that sometimes. Like, we call him a rapist a lot. And I'm like, I, did I ever say allegedly? Ah, oh, fuck. It, I don't know. That's, look, a, that's gonna... actually going to be um, worse soon because he's about to have absolute power for, like, 40 years. This isn't going to be like Trump where, you know, ah, oh, that sucks, but in four years tops we can vote him out. This is for life. Like, well, this is a, he, this he is can... permanent damage that Trump is doing to our nation. He can still be, he can still be removed. Um, but like, uh, not yeah. easily. Here's if a... I can go into the similar rant I did earlier, right yeah, quick, of course. because it takes 51 votes to get a, uh, a SCOTUS to be nominated, right? Yeah. But it takes 66 votes to remove them. And I really think this is backwards. I think it should be 66 to actually get them confirmed as a SCOTUS, 51 to remove them. That way, problems can actually be resolved in a timely manner, and you don't have to uh, just have these monsters sitting on the bench immobile. Like, we can't... I mean, he's already committed perjury. We saw him do it. We saw him lie under oath. He lied about stuff that everybody knows. Like, you know, water's the devil's triangle. It's a drinking game, okay? God. Um, you know... So he's, he's committed perjury. He should be in jail. If we did put him in jail, guess what? All Mitch McConnell has to do is be like, well, this is ridiculous. We can't impeach him just because he's a criminal. And they'll just pretend like nothing's going on, and they'll leave a SCOTUS behind bars. Well, my... my and, no, he'll be pardoned. If they if he ever got convicted, he'd be pardoned instantaneously. Oh, of course, because of the uh, deplorable in chief would never let anything happen to him. Well, my whole my whole thing is because um... because Trump has gone on TV to attack his accuser to say that George Soros is behind all the protests. Because that's another like, that's, have... an, that's another thing I brought up. So if you if you if you're if you're in government and people are like following you at the airport, people are protesting your house. Maybe you are not fulfilling the will of the people, and you should stop. 
Because even under the worst, you know, the worst years of Obama, when, like, there was so much hate against him, nobody was really... I don't remember ever, anybody ever taking, like, time out to, like, follow him around or try to be like, Senator, Mr. Mr. Obama, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, can you, can you tell us this? Like, that's the thing. People are so angry right now. Like, there are, like, multiple uh, rallies happening. And, like, I saw a thing where, like... It's um, actually really huge, and uh, Ann Coulter got arrested at one of them. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like people are out in the street. If people are out in the streets, maybe you should think about what you're doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe they should tread fucking lightly. And look, they have other options, right? They don't need Special K. They can remove him and put Barrett in. Barrett is actually further to the right than Special K, but he's not tainted like K is, right? Well, also his temperament might be better. Here's what I say. I think yeah, his that temperament gonna, might be better. If you're gonna be a if you're gonna be a Supreme Court justice, since it is for life. I think the confirmation needs to be a little bit more severe, and I think you should have to go through, like, those Batman, Ra's al Ghul trials, you know? I would love that. Oh, my God. Well, like, the Senate is like, you must pick this flower. It grows only on the west side of the highest peaks. You have to, like, go through a quest to prove that you're pure of heart, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think you should have to go through some serious some serious quests before you can become a, a lifetime appointee. Make, like, uh, Mitch McConnell would bring Special K to, like, the mountain somewhere, and Mitch McConnell would sit on, like, a mat meditating, and Special K would be like, so how do I become the SCOTUS already? God! And Mitch McConnell would be like, bring me a truth flower. Or the... What does that even mean? <laughs> bring me a truth flower. Well, could you tell me God? Bring I'll me a... a... Dad, bring me one. Bring me a truth flower. You're a truth flower. Uh, Have you ever truth flowered? Put it in your butt. Or the, or at the very least, at the very least, you should just be put to like all kinds of tortures and like you know forced to like drink so much that like and, and then take like uh, what is it sodium pentothal like truth serum. You should have to go through all these things so that there's that your masks are off and you have to show who you really are. Yep. The being a Supreme Court justice should be so awful that like no one really wants to do it. Yeah. But we still have, like, very high qualifiers to actually become one. So, like, not just any old Joe Schmo from the film Jackass could come out and say, you know what, I'll hurt myself. Hell yeah, I'll become I, a judge. I actually love that. I would love to hear, like, I'm Johnny Knoxville and this is SCOTUS. And then, like, <laughs> he just... More, still more qualified than our current president. <laughs> then he just runs up and hits a bunch of other justices with, like, bam, flour. Bam, bam, and he runs up and, like, uh, cup checks Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> I would love that. Jack, the new Jackass, they're all SCOTUSes. Yeah, I'd put all the guys <laughs> on Jackass up before I'd put Canava up. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, he is... Like, the thing that really gets me is that he swore revenge on the liberals before they even yeah, that's... started questioning him. He's like, Hillary, and hold the libs, ooh, I'm gonna get you. That's like, uh, I mean, if you put a literal vampire, or like a, yeah, like a, like a, like a literal monster in front of, um... The Supreme Court, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, the Senate committee, and they were just like, uh, "Hey, Mr. Frankenstein, uh, uh, what can you tell us? About oh, fire bad and kill. Okay, I think we've heard all we need to hear. So, um, Dracula, what is your um, stance on uh, fair and equal trade? <laughs> I want to trigger liberals. I want to make all the blood free for everyone. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, man. So the thing I wanted to talk about, because I didn't want to spend a whole podcast talking about Trump or uh, Canava, because uh, yeah, right... The, the sad thing is, is that my uh, my notes this week are all just like the beat by beat of what happened, all the twists and turns of this week. This week was poisonous because it gave us hope. And that's just wrong well, if you remember, the face of hopelessness. If you remember your Shawshank, man, uh, hope. Hope can be one of the most dangerous things. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, here's the thing. A, a Republican president nominated this guy, and the Senate is right now 51 to 49 in favor of Republicans. So how many votes do you think he's going to get? Yeah, 51 to 49. Well, hopefully their own voter suppression laws will come back to bite them, and then they'll be like, wait a minute, what do you mean we can't all vote? <laughs> But, I mean, there, there's, of course, going to be fallout. Like, Collins had her stupid speech today, and people are... Senator, and Senator Maine Collins will from, never let her get elected again. Yeah, Senator Collins from Maine, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, so it breaks down like we thought it would, which is uh, the Republican majority voting... Which is weird they had a vote to vote. It's, that was what well, was weird it was, to me. It, it was a vote to end the debates, right? Like, we aren't going to talk about this anymore, is what they were voting Why on. did they allow a debate in the first place? I don't even know why well, they went that far. Uh, 
But I mean, just because they voted yay here doesn't mean they'll vote yay for the confirmation. Because right. McCain voted yay to end debates on ending Obamacare, well, that, but then yeah. he voted nay. Well, that was but we don't have a we don't have a McCain anymore. Well, that so was, we don't really have. That was because you can't even threat. Like I imagine that all the other Republican senators are being threatened with with everything up to bodily harm if they don't toe the line. But you can't threaten a man who's been in Vietnam. Yeah, A, he's been in Vietnam. B, he had less than a year to live because of his brain cancer, which would have been covered under Obamacare. But I'm not worried that his brain cancer, that he didn't get the best my, medical care. That is the least of everything that I think is a problem. I'm certain no, my, that... My, my point was that uh, you can't threaten a guy who knows that his time on this earth is extraordinary. But limited. I still... I saw something, and I agree with uh, somebody that posted. They go, you guys are all acting like McCain would have voted nay. You know McCain would have towed the line. And he actually might have. That was a problem with a maverick. Sometimes he flies by the tower sometimes he does what he's supposed to do yeah i mean the whole the whole he's a maverick thing disappeared for me whenever he started to run against obama and he towed the republican party line to the letter right up until the campaign season was over then he could start telling the truth again well that's what happened to uh that's but, what happened to romney when he ran like romney was a pretty from everything I know about Romney, he's definitely not perfect, but as far as that cesspool goes, he's what Obamacare was um, was modeled after, was his model. Yeah, exactly. The uh, What he gave to his state is what Obama's like, well, I'll just uh, give this to everyone, okay? Because what happened was, originally, Obama did want universal health care, but he talked to the Republicans, and the compromise was what we got with Obamacare, which is garbage, right? It's really, really bad. We still need a single-payer system, Yeah. but... Like every other first world civilized country on earth has, well, the right? Only, the, so the only, but we don't. The only thing that I think might happen, and I don't, I'm not betting on it, but so they couldn't get, they couldn't get, they couldn't get the, uh, they couldn't get Obamacare repealed like they said they would, um, and that was pretty, pretty, a pretty important thing for them. And so, like, I, I don't know if they'll get this vote. They probably will, but we could still be surprised. Um, but either way, like... <sighs> so the actual vote's tomorrow, so we don't know yeah. yet. But I've given up hope. Like, it, It's more comforting if you just go ahead and admit that you're fucked. So what we were talking about, and what I wanted to actually make this, this podcast day about, is I wanted to talk about the Civil War. Because um, I did a little bit of math. Um, on when the, So the Civil War ended, technically ended in 1865, but like Reconstruction lasted, God, um, probably up into... I don't know, maybe up into the Great Depression, up until like the 1900s or whatever, like uh, Reconstruction when we were basically half of the country was under military occupation from the other half. Right, but uh, it, Mr. Lincoln, other than that, how was the rest of the play? Yeah, so Reconstruction went terribly because Lincoln got shot. He was really the only man that could pull it off. Uh, and so basically the North was like, you know what, South, fucking do whatever, we're, we're out of here. Because um, people only have so long to care about a specific issue. So the thing about the Civil War and the reason why I wanted to bring it up today uh, is because no one really thought it could happen. You know, yeah. we started having those those regional differences where like uh, you know the, the like states were vying for power and they wanted to expand slavery and we couldn't find a way to compromise about it because you can't right. compromise on some issues. Yeah, yeah, I mean, can some people be owned by other people or not? That's uh, that's really not a middle ground issue. You it's can't... like, guys, what, not what I'm hearing here is that you're all saying that you're biased in favor of what you want, but if we all just try to, you know, here I am sitting in the middle, this is this is the best position to be, maybe you should own people sometimes, hmm? Maybe it's like partial ownership, it's, like with uh, yeah, children and it's divorces. Not, it's not like you can timeshare a human being, right? We're like, listen... <laughs> You own Fred on uh, on holidays and uh, two weeks a year, uh, and the rest of the time Fred is free. Like it doesn't work. So the compromise is you know there's a guy named uh, I believe it's Shelby Foot or Shelby Footy. Uh, he's an author, uh, historian, and he had this really great piece in Ken Burns' Civil War documentary where he was like, um, you know, uh, Americans like to think that they are. The, you know, the rugged individualist, but actually, American true genius is the genius for compromise. And during the Civil War, we compromise failed. And I agree with that. I think that compromise is what makes the country work. And then when we're unable to find any kind of compromise, that's when things go bad. 
Yeah, like right now, I think a fair compromise would be to uh, just put Barrett up. He's already been fully vetted. They could have him through in a week, and everyone will be happier. Yeah. But um, they they just want to stick it to the liberals. They just want to. And I don't. They just want to piss off the world. And yeah, and I don't understand where this stick it to the liberals anger came from because. Unless you're following the unless you're following the lead that that the propaganda that's being sold to you that like the liberals want to turn your kids out in the streets and make them gay and then give your kids to you know Mexican Muslims like to Obama car. So that's yeah that's not that's not a real thing like liberals aren't out right. to hurt you and destroy the world like right, that, most that, 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 that's something that really does annoy the hell out of me like if the deplorables win then what do we get we get no health care uh, everyone who's brown is ejected from the country uh people are only allowed to marry opposite sex people etc right get, yeah, we get child what, detention camps yeah yeah child detention camps and so but what happens if uh the liberals win we get uh, health care we get freedom we get fewer school shootings all kinds of things all kinds of nice stuff so basically if the liberals win everyone gets to benefit including the deplorables that are fighting tooth and nail right. against having a better country so like so it's like shit we don't get to actually punish them for what they're doing we get to punish them just by annoying them that they have to watch everything they fought to destroy get rebuilt but uh, I don't I don't care about well, punishing people. I mean, yeah, there's that like revenge spirit right, of vengeance they, in they, me. They, they, they get to punish us by uh, poisoning the well, literally. But, but the problem is, remember, because remember Tr they, Trump is actually on record saying, you know, a little radiation is not bad for anyone. But here's the thing: remember that like they also drink from that well uh, yes. to to like. Attempt... Yeah, I mean, they're punishing themselves too. They're yeah. stupid. And that's like a... and that's the problem is when we begin to see other people as others. And not as our kinsmen, uh, especially when we share space, that's a problem. Yeah. Like triggering the liberals I... and try, trying to hurt the liberals by taking away their rights is also taking away your own rights. You know, putting putting kids in in, uh, in concentration camps uh, is going to hurt you too because, again, if they do it to kids, do you think that they're not going to do it to you at some point? Once the envelope has been pushed that way, it doesn't generally go back. It's like it doesn't go back the other way. Not easily, not easily. So like, and I mean, it does pain me to um, to paint the deplorables as the deplorables. But here's the thing: is that if they would just stop being deplorable, if they would just stop hating people for wanting to marry who they want to marry, for instance, and change their ways for the better, then I wouldn't see them as deplorable anymore, right? Well, I don't I know. I see life as a matter of customs. If they have the customs of a deplorable, they are deplorable. If they repent, then I will see them as better people again, someone that's seen the way. I don't know what... But that's... I don't, I'm, and maybe this is. But that's still I'm, seeing them as the other for now. But I don't. Yeah. I just. I see them too much as a thing to be defeated, rather than something to compromise with. Because if they want like baby cages, I can't. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. Is I don't know what on what based on what I want. I don't know what I can compromise on. You know, with yeah. with immigration, uh, immigration reform, it doesn't feel like a compromise to set up a better work visa program where you can be over here temporarily. And run it like probation, where you have a case officer, so that you don't run off, and you know, like you have a certain amount of time here, then you have to go back to your home country. But while you're here, you can work, and like you know, there's rules. I don't see why that would be so much worse than, you know, like putting people in indefinite detention camps. I don't, I don't understand how I can compromise on my values. Yeah. You know. Um, that, yeah, that's that's the thing, and the problem is because we can't compromise because we've gone so far the other way, and there's no room to compromise. I don't know if we can come back from it. Like, so in in the 1860s when the Civil War started, uh, and just like we talked about in like I think it was before World War One in England, you know, there was a whole like home by Christmas, boys, this war will be over quick, you know, like they yes, believed that, that, that that was a meme before memes existed. Yeah, they believed that or the, it would become that. Both sides believed that the uh, civil war would be a quick affair and people were signing up cuz they were like, "Oh, man, boy, I don't want to miss this. Are we going to whoop them Yanks?" And you know, the the north was like, "Oh, whoa, 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 you know, we'll we'll whoop Johnny Reb and like they got into it and then Shout they were the rise again. They got into it and they were like, "Oh, shit." This is real bad. Like there, and there's no way. Once you start down a path, there's no way to get out of it. And then cue that uh, montage from Pokemon, the movie 2000, when all the Pokemon were fighting all the clones of Pokemon, and it was like, brother, my brother, starts <laughs> playing as uh, all the people in the trenches start shooting each other and screaming. Goes their bones have to get sawed off with a so what rusty I, toothpick. So the one, the one good thing, I guess, like 
about the way our Civil War happened versus a lot of Civil Wars was the country broke down very nicely into kind of like even sections, right? Yes, yes. Like, that was actually one of the more convenient parts of the uh, Civil War is that you could just draw a line and say, you know, whether you're north or south of the Mason-Dixon line is what side you're fighting for. There won't be any line like that uh, when this comes again. What this is going to look like is if you if you if you dial back the clock a little bit on Syria, right? Uh, for most of my life, Syria has been a pretty like it has been a third world shithole. It's been like kind of like a first world country, like you know what I mean? Like you'd go on vacation in Syria, like you know, uh, yeah. Their their government was not good, but like when shit popped off, that whole country is destroyed. And what it is is a bunch of different bands of um. You know, like uh, uh, militias it's... and like rebel groups fighting each other, fighting the government. Like, I mean, I've seen cities that are fucking ancient that have just been reduced to something out of The Walking Dead, but like yeah. in real life, and that's it's ex- insane. And that's exactly what is going to happen in this country. Is it's not going to break down along like because if you look at the um, if you look at the blue and red map of like uh, Democrat Republican, right? Uh, Even worse, break it down to, like, um, districts and stuff. Yeah, by districts, right? So you'll see, it's all over the place. Like, it's, it's, so it's not even, it's not even conveniently broken down, so you're just, you're gonna have a ton of, like, of, uh, like, guerrilla-style war and, like, different groups fighting each other, fighting the government. And And the deepest red states in America is still, like, at worst, 60, 70 percent Republican. That's still 30 to 40 percent Democrats. Like, virtually half the state will go one way and half will go the others. Yeah. If it turns, if this happens. And there's not going to be any clear states that are just clearly left or right. And, and like, what really, what really kind of, um, what really, like, bothers and scares me is some people want this. They're excited about it. They think that, like, oh, yeah, we'll finally show them. And I'm like, it's, that, that's one of those things that um, I would only be excited about if I knew that there was no chance of it actually happening, right? Because it's yeah. a fun thing to think about as a concept. <laughs> well, but talk, as soon as you're yeah. like, oh shit, this could actually happen. We've well, talked, you know, we, I'm. <laughs> we we I, I always compare it to the uh, when we hiked the Appalachian Trail. Like, you know what it's like to walk in the rain for four days without being able to wipe your ass properly. Now, yes, I had people also shooting at you and the possibility of dying face down in the mud. Well, Peter, my uh, my other leg's got the gangrene now, so uh, yeah, gonna need for you to uh, carry me with both arms. Oh, oh wait, guess... your other arm fell off. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a bummer. But the so the other scary thing as I was talking about was can, can like... we both agree that um if that happens again and we have to like flee to the Appalachian Trail to uh, save ourselves, that we'll make Wesley carry all of our stuff. Uh, well, no, because I'm, I'm, I know more about what I'm doing now. I'm not just going into the woods for four days with nothing to eat but spaghetti in a plastic bag. I still want to make Wesley Beer a pack meal. Uh, I mean, we can, but he'll die. You know, you know <laughs> he'll die. His, his, he doesn't have. He does. He doesn't have. He's not. He's he's not built for that. He's not built for speed. He's built for comfort. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there'll be at least like five hours where it'll still be funny before it turns really, really sad. And right? I feel like. And I, I feel mean, like sad as in, oh gosh, I'm dying. But the first five hours would be like, oh gosh, I'm making me carry all this stuff. Jeepity, how dare you on yours? And I do feel like our good friend Wesley. He's so kind and he's so pure of heart that. He'll have his own troubles because people tend to glom onto Wesley, and so he'll be carrying like six other people. And we're like, Wesley, why are you carrying all these people on your back? He's, oh, that's Doris. I uh, I met her down at work, and uh, she can't walk, so I'm carrying her. And then uh, Doris invited all her cousins, and I'm gonna carry them too. <laughs> like he's just he's too nice. Uh, yep, yep. But he fucking yeah, I don't I don't know how we're gonna come back for this. And so the the bigger the bigger fear I have, and my prediction, and. God, my I hate how I hate to toot my own horn in such a horrible way, but my predictions politically have been pretty accurate. So I'm going a little bit further out there, uh, based on the stuff I read. Um, sometime in Trump's second term, if he gets a second term, which he might, we should be prepared for that. Uh, yeah. We're going to see a global economic collapse. Yeah. It's going to um, be even worse by his third term. Well, we'll see. Uh, so we're gonna see we're gonna see another Great Depression. People That's... listening are like, "Ah, oh, these people don't know anything. Presidents don't get third terms. Yeah, who's gonna stop them? Oh, dictators. Stop them? Dictators do. <laughs> dictators get all the terms they I want. I don't. I don't think. I think maybe he might get a second term, but I think he's gonna be impeached. I think the like like uh, some of the political yeah. commentary I've read, Republicans will have everything I... they wanted. They don't need him anymore. Then he'll just be a liability. 
Yeah, like what we're seeing here is the fulfillment of a 40 plus year plan where they have a commanding majority of SCOTUS. And after this, their plan is to pretty much just sort of self destruct and then reform in a few years because the Senate and House go left, right, left, right. And yeah. it's way overdue to go back left again because it's been eight goddamn years since the Senate and House have been blue. Right? Since yeah. Obama had two years of everything blue, then everything turned red except for the presidency. And it's been fucking terrible. And now that we have a commanding, you know, no swing vote red SCOTUS, that means uh, if gay marriage ever gets relitigated, it's gone. If um, Roe versus Wade gets relitigated, it's gone. Like, uh, shit's going to get really bad. And that's, I think that's when you start, when you really but, start taking and, uh, away. But I, now that they have that, and they they're, they're going to have that for at least like forty years, like I said, right? Yeah. They don't need to keep the house in the in the Senate, right? They can all just self destruct. The ones that are lost can become lobbyists, and then they just have to wait like eight years, and they'll come back, and it'll be red again. Except they'll still have the red, um, yeah. SCOTUS. Like that's well, their plan. They're just going to tick away, then tick back again. Well, they, it's a master stroke by McConnell. Well, what's going to happen though is so you, you say you pass the Supreme Court. They take away marriage equality. They take away, you know, what what few rights women have won. People are already in the streets. That's gonna be. That's where the civil war happens, right? That's when people, yeah. when people's governments stop listening to them and they feel that they have no other alternative. Yeah, but then... when you make peaceful protest impossible, then violent protest becomes inevitable. Yeah. Um. There, you know, there's another excerpt. Uh, I want to read to you here. This is actually from Thomas Paine's. Uh, common sense. It's a famous, a famous uh, pamphlet he penned, uh, telling people why they should uh, uh, fight against King George. I won't read the whole thing, but there's a, um, there's there's a really cool part here I like. He says, uh, so basically, uh, men of all ranks have talked about this controversy from different motives and different designs, but they have all been ineffective, and the period of debate is closed. Arms as the last resource will decide the contest. The appeal was the choice of the king, and we hath accepted the challenge. So the point is, is like. A bunch of people are talking about it. Nothing's getting done, and he's basically saying, "All right, guns are the last resource. If you want to throw down, we'll throw down." And so, when you start to see, when you start to see the Supreme Court rolling back the clock, I think people are going to throw down because, they are. like, they have no other choice. And once people have gained some measure of equality and they have gained some measure of um, of peace, you know, and like a piece of the pie, they're not just going to give it up. There was a great quote uh, when I was watching the Civil doc the Civil War documentary get hyped hyped for this. Um, it was a quote from a guy who had uh, gotten out of slavery, and he said basically, "If I was ever taken back as a slave again, I'd take a gun and I'd shoot myself." Mm. So that actually reminds me of uh, Black Panther, where the guy was saying, "You know, my ancestors are the ones that jumped off the boat because they knew drownings better than sla the slavery that awaited them." Yeah, but that's also kind of unfair to people who were kidnapped because they didn't know, they didn't what know about going to happen. Yeah. yeah, they didn't know. But that's the same way. It's like, well, if I was one of the Jews, you know, going to Dachau, I would have fought my way out. You didn't know where you were going, and you knew if you tried to fight, you might get shot. But if you shut up and just maybe see where the train's going, maybe you won't die. You oh, know? they brought us the candy. Okay, well, that's not so bad. Yeah, like, <laughs> it, I, I really hate people who are, like, backward, backwards-looking historians when you can't yeah, place yeah. yourself in the times of what's going on. Oh, yeah, yeah like, I we're having done to right now. We don't know how tomorrow's going to play out. Yeah, I mean, and he may not be confirmed, but he probably will. And Trump may win a second term, you know? It's very possible, like, people well, like He'll to... probably be impeached in 2019. Yeah, either way, so my whole thing with him is he's not he's not smart enough, savvy enough, or Machiavellian enough. He's a stupid demagogue. There have been better demagogues before, and there will be smarter demagogues after. Here's the thing, though. I, I feel like the lady talking to Cohen that one time, most of them, all of them? <laughs> well, like, uh, well, the problem with Canavaz, he's also, like, pro-executive branch, right? So, like, all his rulings are all about how the... President can't Presidents. be, yeah. President can't be litigated, and he's above the law, and this, that, and the other is basically what his rulings say. The problem with that is, is Trump's a big problem, but people aren't thinking about what's coming next. What's yeah, gonna, yeah. what's gonna walk through the door? Because what one person has as executive privilege, the next president has, right? Yeah. So here's the thing: like a lot of people were cheering whenever Obama was signing executive orders to get stuff through that McConnell would never let get through the Senate. And I cheered too, you know, because it's like, 
the GOP existed to be obstructionist and to just say no to everything Obama wanted. Yeah. He had even tricked them on a number of occasions by just changing what he wanted to what they were asking for just to toy with them. And it was hilarious to watch uh, McConnell have to agree with what he wanted and then filibuster himself to stop it from happening because Obama wanted it. Obama did that several times. Merrick Garland, who they held up for 360 plus days without a, uh, a hearing, that's the um, the SCOTUS under that Obama nominated in his last year of office that they refused to uh, even he- hear out. Right? Yeah. That that guy was the guy that the Republicans wanted. They floated that name to say, you know, Obama, if you would just ask for someone like this, we would say yes. And Obama's like, mm, okay, then uh, that's the guy I pick. And they're like, oh, shit, we weren't expecting you to call our bluff. And so what they did is they just pretended like nothing happened, hoped for the best, and just sort of plowed on ahead. And it paid off for them, actually, because uh, the Russians decided to work with the GOP to steal an election. So good on them. Yeah, so, like, it's – so that that might go red, but – Trump's gone, whatever. He's he's running out of political capital. He may not care about popularity polls because everybody around him is going, uh, oh, shit, uh, don't tell him, but um, America would be very happy. Polls are showing that if uh, if, if Trump were to be crucified, um, yeah, like 60% of Americans would approve. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, but other people do worry about popularity 65% polls. 65% in California. Yeah, other people do care. Other other people want a political life after him. And so they're using him while he still has some political juice left. They're going to get their justice. They got their tax cuts. They got everything they want. And once they get everything they want, he's done. But, the go ahead. Oh, I was just, um, I had a greater point to what I was saying earlier, but I forgot what it was by the time I got through saying whatever I was saying. We're so Damn. old. <laughs> I know. No, but, but uh, continue. Yeah, but whatever Trump can do, you set up a Supreme Court that's just going to bow down to the president, let him do whatever he wants. Obama expanding executive orders. Oh, that was it. Thank you. Yeah, so I cheered when Obama did that, right? I cheered. But here's the thing. Guess who has it now? Yeah, okay, exactly. Okay, sad. He, Trump has it. Trump has all the power of you're, Obama. You're cheering. Meanwhile, I'm quoting Game of Thrones, and I'm like... Oh, executive orders, huh? Oh, you child of summer. Winter is coming. And it will. Winter will, will exactly. show up. Exactly. And that's what happened. And because Bush expanded the executive branch tremendously, which the deplorables hated whenever Obama got into office, because now he had yeah. all of uh, George W. Bush's powers, okay? And then whenever Obama regenerated into the next doctor, which was Trump, oh no, I think something went wrong. Sad. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the problem. Now like, he has now so, he has all these new powers. Now imagine, uh, and I've, we talked about this before, but imagine somebody with like the left wing popularity of Obama, but with like the vileness of Trump, but also with like with no political scruples. Like once somebody gets in that office that realizes like how to wield power effectively and is also popular. We are screwed because they're, we've thrown everything out of whack. There's nobody that we clearly the Congress and the Senate won't stop them. And now we're undermining the Supreme Court as kind of like a, its own branch because you know, we're setting them up so that they would support the, uh, the president. So what comes next? The, as I call him, like the left wing Trump or Trump with a brain because people are going to be so pissed off about Trump. He can do anything or she. That's... Yes, that's been the uh, the one saving grace of Trump is that he's a fucking moron. So yep. no matter how much he wants to destroy America, he keeps being foiled by just tripping over his own balls. Yeah, or having a uh, toilet paper on his shoe. Yeah, but the next person, imagine if uh, someone out there saw this happening and they decided to rise to prominence by, you know, spouting anti-Trump rhetoric and telling the liberals they'd give them anything they want, and then they became the next president, and now they're loved by like 90% of America because they got rid of the uh, deplorable in chief. Yeah, and, we, and we've been lucky because the last couple Republican presidents uh, have not been real smart. Um and they've all had, like, unlimited power. It would be kind of like a genie gift, you know? If you're like, you know, you ask the genie, you're like, oh, I wish I had unlimited executive power. But for some reason, it also makes you dumber. <laughs> you're like, yes, unlimited power, but I can't remember how to tie my shoes. Damn. <laughs> Damn you, genie. So that's what's been happening. Now, I think what we're going to have to do is uh, just go into Libya and uh, we'll find Obama there, okay? <laughs> That was um, supposed to be a Bush impression, but I can't remember him going after Obama. Anyway, continue. Yeah, because he just wanted he just wanted to ha- he just wanted to hang out and let Karl Rove and Dick Cheney run the government. 
Damn, Rove. <laughs> yeah, th that was my point. So imagine if you took uh, Cheney's brain and put it into the charismatic body of Obama. That's what's going to happen. You're going to get somebody with that kind of popularity simply because they're not Trump. We are even guilty of it in going, well, this justice is further right, but at least he's not a monster. Or, oh, McCain, he made some real shitty decisions, but at least, like, so we're even going along with it, and we're pretty friggin' yeah. liberal. So, like, imagine other people. Yeah, imagine whenever it's uh, a real monster, but they're left. So they're like, oh, well, thank God it's not Trump. Yeah. And I and mean, that's... like, fucking, at this point, I was just sitting here, I swear to God, thinking, oh, I wish Dick Cheney was president. That would be so much better. But no, that's, it wouldn't. That's... He's, an, he's a genuine monster, but he's smart enough to cover it up. Yeah. And he would actually have thrown... If it was Dick Cheney in the office right now, Special K would be gone. If it was Dick Cheney, would be like, we just, we can't have this kind of discretion in the American eyes. You know, he would know that people fucking hate him. If he would hate him, if he put this guy Dick on Cheney the Dick would have seat. never let would have never get old Barty yeah, K he, near the spot. Like, yeah, Kavanaugh would have never been within a million miles of the Skoda seat. Dick Cheney would have seen right through that jackass. He's well, I mean, like he's and that's the danger is he's an evil, ruthless political operative. You know, uh, as Dick we said, he would have approached, approached him like Darth Vader and been all like rubber rubber on Merry Christmas and then shoved him off the flight of stairs. Yeah, it's like right now we've got. Um, you know, uh, what was his name? Christian Haydenson, the guy that played Anakin. We've got yeah. Anakin in power right now, and he's just like, ah, I want, like, you know, real dumb, real whiny. But, like, eventually, it's, we're going to get... It's fake sand, folks, okay? Very fake sand. It's very coarse. <laughs> I don't like it. But eventually, we're going to get Emperor Palpatine. Like, there's going to give you a guy that walks in, and then eventually he's going to be like, I am the Congress. Like, mm -hmm. and that's the danger. And, like, no one's even worried about that, like... We're also going to have a Great Depression. So what happens when you have a Great Depression? It's really easy to get people riled up when they're hungry and poor. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably McC McConnell's um, ultimate scheme, is that everything swings back hard left, just as Trump's depression kicks in. That way it looks like the Democrats are responsible, and he can be like, well, now we've just got to go all red so that we can get America's economy out of this Democrat-created slump. How much longer can uh, McConnell possibly live? That dude's like 78, right? Yeah, but I mean, uh, turtles have a lifespan of like 500 years, so we're McConnell's going to be majority leader for a long time. Well, turtles also get run over by cars all the time, so <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it's again, it's a gift to the Magi, like, oh, I could live 500 years, but I get run over by a Hyundai. <laughs> oh. oh, God, and then Gene comes to, like, visit us, and we're like, no, Gene, don't help that turtle across the road! Well, you know, did I, I, did I ever tell my, my turtle murder story on the podcast before? Oh no, you killed a turtle? I killed a lot of turtles. <laughs> um I ah, I killed I a ton, you have. I killed a ton of turtles and here's what happened. Here's the story of the turtle holocaust and I still feel awful about it to this day. When I uh, read this Native American legend that says uh to get and there's a Native American legend that says to get into heaven, uh every human when they die will come to this small footbridge. And on the other side of that footbridge are all the animals they interacted with their li in their life, right? And those animals, based on how the humans treated them, will allow the humans into paradise or to be turned away, right? What if I was really mean to, like, one frog one time? All right, well, how many other animals have you been nice to? Like, virtually all of them. Okay, do you think that over as a majority they can talk the frog into letting you through, or is he going to filibuster you? Uh, is it McConnell frog, or...? <laughs> I don't know. Did you did you hurt a McConnell frog? I hope not. <laughs> Um, well, the, uh, so my problem is the, um, the coalition of turtles is, is... Oh, no, good to see Mr. Roosty again! <laughs> All right, so maybe, maybe your chicken, Mr. Roosty, can talk him into it. <laughs> Mr. Roosty eats frogs. He'll take care of it. He'll well, take he's... care of this problem. Well, here's my problem. So, I used to rescue turtles, and then, uh, I would put them in the pond, right? I'd save them and put them in the pond, right? <laughs> They were tortoises, weren't they? Well, here's the thing. I, I, as I learned that some, some turtles are aquatic and a lot aren't... <laughs> And then I, re oh, no. I remembered how many turtles I kind of tossed into the pond. And so turtles need <laughs> oxygen, and they can't breathe under They can hold their breath, but they can't breathe under water. I just I did some quick math to all the summers I was saving turtles off of a hot road and putting them in my pond with steep sides. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that when I get to that footpath to paradise, there's going to be a bunch of turtles going, Well, 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 look who decided to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pond in his backyard, huh? So once I once I see that footbridge, I'm just gonna be like, nah, all right, sorry, I'll I'll see myself out. 
It seems like you're, uh, trying to sun yourself in paradise. How about you go dip yourself into that lake over there? Be a real shame. fire. Be a real shame if someone were to throw you in a lake that you couldn't get hold of. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I don't know how many turtles I accidentally killed by putting them in that pond, but God, it was probably a baker's dozen at least, and that's a conservative estimate. Yep. Because this happened over a span of years. You're talking, uh, you're talking turtles, tur- turtles all summer over over a period from like the ages of twelve to like twenty one. Oof, the shredder would be proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's, ah, tonight we dine on turtle soup. That's why I'm not getting into heaven. But yeah, so like, yeah, we're gonna have a depression. We're probably gonna have some form of civil war because people aren't being heard. Uh, you know. The fact that, like... They... I like the podcast better when it was about turtle bridges. Yeah, yeah, no, me too. All right. Well, All like, right, the... we'll, we'll get back to real stuff. The fact that, like, we called for an FBI investigation, not really meaning it, like, oh, the FBI should investigate That was yeah. fucked up, yeah. Um... I don't think they understand that people are still paying attention. Like, people have found a new... Because it used to be some bullshit would happen, people would forget about it, because just, like, you know, you you do... But people, I think, are so angry and they're so upset about all this that they their stamina has grown greater and their anger has yeah. grown greater and they don't forget. Yeah, yeah, we've um, we've it, it's been like we've been going through um turtle training and Keegan Kai training these last few years as we just sort of build up our stamina for outrage and more and more and more protests and outrage. And now here we are at another thing, and people have not been, like, really pissed about something in a while. So they have a hell of a lot of practice doing this from the past few years, and we just hit a long slump where um, Trump's normal bullshit just wasn't enough to get people riled up, well, and I mean, now it really there, is. There's a story we're not even talking about where he was just in there, the New York Times did a huge investigation on his tax fraud schemes. No one's even talking yeah. about that. Like, yeah, yeah. You know? There's, it's like I said earlier, the reason why we don't care anymore... Okay, so if anyone's curious, yes, Trump is a major criminal. He's um, he's a poor motherfucker. He's destroyed his um, inheritance. Everything he has, he was given. Remember the small loan of $1 million. First of all, it wasn't really a $1 million, because the source on that is, well, Donald Trump. So it's probably a lie, and it was a lie. It was $5 million. But they were also saying, you know, crunching the numbers, $1 million back then would be like $150 million in today's money. Or two hundred and fifty million? It was a lot. Right? He was given a fucking fortune. He was given such a fortune that only a complete moron would piss it away. Fast forward a few months and he's pissed it away and he's twenty five million dollars in debt, what, what, which would be more than a billion dollars in what, today's money. What, what, and his would, dad bailed him out. What would you do if you were given a loan of that size today? And don't uh, do the like or well, I'd pay off my student loans and I'd buy a nice house for my mother like what would you after the bullshit, like what's the you got money, your responsibilities are taken care of, what are you doing? 150 million? Yeah. Well, I mean, half 75 million would automatically go in the bank, and that's just like money I don't touch. That's for paying off bills and whatever. So 75 million is my budget. Um, shit. Well, I can't buy like a house catapult with um with that much, or could I? I the house is only a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, I could buy a house catapult. You could buy, yeah, I'd... you could buy a house somewhere. Not in New York, not in New York City, but you could buy a house somewhere else. I think. I think in no, our home... a house catapult. I want um. Like houses that you can launch. From, oh, like, a to giant launch device. a oh to a catapult to throw a whole house. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You're gonna need millions of houses. Mil- yeah, you're gonna need like Elon Musk money to do that. I don't think you can get a house catapult for that much. Yeah, not for seventy five million. I mean, yeah. I think I could get a few houses, especially if it's just the skeleton of a house. I mean, if you're and gonna launch, just... if you're gonna launch like tiny houses that people tow behind their cars, I think that's doable. Hmm. You know, and the catapult itself wouldn't be hard to make. It's just the size, you know, and the size. And also, to get a whole house on a catapult without falling to pieces, because remember, a house isn't a solid object. Right, right. So I don't think so the, I don't think the house so catapult's going to work. I'll have to fill it with something, like people. I'm rich. <laughs> I don't care about people anymore. Um, I don't know. Uh, besides the house catapult, uh, I would definitely get PlayStation VR, because that would be awesome. And besides that, I really don't want anything else right now. I think I would just go hiking. You would go hiking. I would I would um I would hike I would hire a Sherpa to hike with you and to carry like a little um iPad or something that uh, I would have the other um screen to. That way I could be on the iPad and I would pay the Sherpa to like point it at places and let me talk to you and be like, <laughs> Hey Peter, I'm I'm waking up this morning and enjoying my breakfast. How are you? I'm yeah. holding the mosquito bit me. 
I just, Yay! I just, I just go on a long, a long hike. I think I, I would, I would be there with you virtually, right? And yeah. the guy would just have like the battery pack and whatever, could uh, could do the screen and wireless uh, connection or whatever. Yeah, that that would be fun. Cause that I, way, I'm w I'm with you in spirit the entire way. Because I really want enough money to start my own country, but that costs billions, so. Or I would, um, I still want to, I was talking about this the last time we were on the trail. What I really want is something like a beekeeper suit to keep the fucking mosquitoes off. Yeah, we got one of and, those, but I think and, that was uh, after you left. And really? Or did, or, I thought you just musked up. You and Matt were talking about musking up with uh, bug spray and we stuff. We did, but I either took it from you or from somebody else. But it was basically a, uh, it was a net to keep the bugs off your face, but it also extended down your upper torso and had sleeves for your arms. Huh. Well, uh, I want like a full beekeeper suit, and I want it to have like air conditioning inside of it, and maybe also like a extendable stool that could um, walk over rocks. Because if anyone out there has not been on the Appalachian Trail, it's all uphill and it's all rocks and you slick know, roots. You know, you know why, right? Everything is wet and covered in sap, and it sucks. Because they wanted to take you through all the like most mountainous terrain. That's why. Yeah. You didn't even... Basically, I mean, it was like Matt said, it's meant to be an adventure. I'm like, oh, why can't adventures be flat? <laughs> well, we can. There's another trail that we can go hike called the Pacific Crest Trail that's just miles through the desert before we get to Sierra Nevadas. Right, but then it, like, cuts around this one mountainside and it's pure ice and you have to wear, like, spiky shoes to not slide off into oblivion. It's not just, a, it's not just around a mountainside. It's the Sierra Nevada range. Like, you know, where the Donner Party got stuck during winter and ate each other. Those mountains. Oh, okay, so there'll be meat. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. That's what I would do with money. I would just be like, all right, well, I'm going to take some time and go for a long walk, which I'm planning to do anyway at some point. So, Yeah, yeah. yeah so I would do a PlayStation VR. Oh, I wonder if I could get... See, I'm rich here, so I could like pay someone to develop this program. PlayStation VR. But remember that Sherpa screen I talked about earlier? Yeah. I'm in it. I'm in it virtually. So I like hook myself up to the PlayStation, and uh, I... Um, can order the Sherpa around using the controller in my hands and make him just like run around the forest with uh, my viewing screen. I feel like we've gotten really boring. <laughs> like just, what would you do? Oh, I would buy a PlayStation and I would buy a... Like Play just... PlayStation VR. I have the PS4. I just need the VR. If any of our listeners are, lis are um, listening right now and want to do something for us, get me the PSVR. Well, I think, I, that, I think that honestly the best thing to do with money like that, honestly, my honest opinion, is to uh, get rid of it. Get rid of most of it. Get rid of what now? I said, oh, the with, money. Yeah, with that much money, get rid of most of it. Yeah, um, after I put aside like my living money and I bought my PSVR, that's going to be like $300. The other, uh, let's see, if I had $75 million minus $300, that'd be $74 million, yada, 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 yada. So $749 million, something, something, something. I would just take that and like start buying houses with it, but I wouldn't catapult them. I would just like let them be houses for people. Well, people people tend to like lose their minds once that's the problem with uh, people in government and like uh, rich people in general, like the Mercers who are funneling all this money into the uh, the GOP. They're so far removed from normal life like, that like from reality. Yeah, from reality that like they don't even realize that the things that they are doing are hurting people. Don't realize and don't care because you can't have empathy if you can't really think your way around to like, I wonder what that would be like. Mm, that would suck. Yeah. You know, I've taught there's a lot of people right now like uh you know, friends and and people and and women that are very upset uh about the state of things right now. <laughs> and while I can't personally say that like I've been through the trauma that they have been through. Uh, I can I can empathize, and some people can't. I guess. Oh, I know what I would do. I would spend several million dollars on an initiative to um, pay people to uh, walk their dogs to Special K's lawn and just have all their dogs shit on his lawn forever. Just like every morning, new dog shits everywhere. Forget that. Forever. I would, I would buy the houses left and right of his house and just throw keggers forever. Loud. <laughs> Like just loud, That'd annoying. Be sweet, sweet karma. Yeah, loud, annoying. Anybody is invited. Free beer, uh, a twenty-four hour every night. Not during the day, maybe, but on a party every night into the early morning. Cleaning crew comes, resets everything. Beer delivery happens next night. Music, drinking, screaming, party. Ah, oh, that'd be wonderful. Every night until he goes insane. <laughs> So anyway, I have a thing I want to read too that might help give people some hope about the special K thing. If it's I a was, description uh, of the PlayStation uh, VR, I'm going to come <laughs> through this computer screen and punch you. 
I hadn't even thought of that, but that's a great idea. I wonder if I could pull it up. No, don't read what you were gonna read. We have few enough listeners as it is. We don't need to lose the. We don't need to lose the two that still like us. <laughs> oh God, I want to laugh and cry right now because my foot just started cramping. Good. See, that's God telling you, <laughs> don't do that. Okay, so um, this is all written by. Uh, uh, this is a post from Scro, but I've figured out how to summarize it. Because I was reading it earlier while you were um, reading the King Henry VIII thing, or whatever it was. Jesus and Christ. I realized, you, make, I realized you make the historian that, um, in me weep. <laughs> I realized that if you just read the first sentence of each paragraph, that actually summarizes the whole thing really well. Okay, <clears throat> you sound like one of my students, but go ahead. <laughs> So all this is uh, well. Tell us again. Scro tell made tell about, us again um, who Scro is, real quick, in case people have not followed all of the posts. Well, all of the all of our podcasts. He's just a, a poster on some website that uh, I go to sometimes, and he's fairly accurate in his predictions of what's going on. Yeah, if he was he's a political, if he was a political weatherman, we'd be like, I like that Scro guy. When he says it's going to rain, well, I'll be goddamned if it doesn't. Exactly. Ah, okay, so. Uh, I'm jumping to paragraph two, first sentence, and I'm just going to read the first sentence of each uh, paragraph here because I think it uh, does a good job of explaining his thoughts on the whole special case situation. <clears throat> but I think we should recognize everyone who has stood against Kavanaugh has honored this country's highest principles and traditions and defended its honor. The forces for decency and justice are utterly vast in their multitude in this country. Just like with Trump in 2016, we have seen an overwhelming outpouring of energy and enthusiasm to uphold our country's highest values, this time against this time against the depravity of letting an accused rapist and political hack like Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court. Our side, far greater in numbers than the decadent and depraved conservatives in name only, who have enabled this sham to continue, may not win this. But this time... But time is running out for the counter-American opposition, which wraps itself in the flag, but shits all over it with every word of deceit and moral compromise they utter, no matter the form. We who have opposed Kavanaugh, win or lose, have an enormous amount to be proud of. There will be many, many more battles left to fight, and win or lose, the war is just beginning. And because of our superior and intrinsic virtue, that is aligned with our country's highest traditions over the deeply compromised and failing morality of the opposition will win it the arc of history still bends towards justice and away from the pra- and away from the depravity of Donald Trump and his vulgarian supporters so that's just a little um a little hope i wanted to give everyone cuz he still thinks that uh, in the in the end we will have this you know I just came up with a quote. I'm going to quote myself here because I just came up with this. You know, he makes me think of something. And it's something when you look in history. There are times when America is united and we are right. And there have been times when, like, we have we have fought for, like, righteous causes and we have won. And it made me realize that there's nothing more dangerous than Americans when we're angry and we're right. Yeah. You know? You you look at uh you look at like you look at the Civil War again. You look at the people from the North who were fine. The South wasn't gonna take over the North. You know what I mean? They could have stayed there. They would have been fine. They put they they sacrificed their bodies and their lives like you know to fight for a righteous cause. Same thing with when we got into World War Two. We were angry and we were fucking right. And like yep, th- that's the one thing with Americans. You get them angry and for a, for a cause that's righteous like. They'll come together and they'll fuck you up. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, you know, he is, he is right in that, like... And he kind of reminded me of uh, Commander Cobra from G.I. Joe, you know, at the end of every episode. <laughs> Commander Cobra would go, what was he say, like, you mean... I'll get you next time! No, he oh, would... that's Skeletor. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's Skeletor. Uh, Commander Cobra, he would go, like, uh, you may have won the battle, but you haven't won the war. And, like, I... as a kid, I go, oh, there's a difference between battles and wars, okay. <laughs> you are. The um, there is one light in the darkness, and that's uh, another prediction that Scro has. And I'll just um, read it here. Uh, it's gonna be fucking hysterical when they're disappointed that Chief Justice John Roberts is becoming the next Anthony Kennedy slash Sandra Day O'Connor, both of whom were solidly conservative until the court's then exiting swing vote retired. History is repeating itself, and it's going to be very hard for some folks. 
What Basically, you... he's saying right now we don't have a swing vote, but as soon as we get five Republicans, five solid Republicans versus four Democrats, John Roberts, he believes the current Chief Justice, John Roberts, is going to become that swing vote and that he, by himself, will stop them from repealing Roe versus Wade, and will we... stop them from repealing Hodges v. What's the gay marriage one called again? I don't remember. I just call it the Marriage Equality Act, but yeah. yeah. Um, that's the thing about, like, uh, we have to remember that, like, there are there are good people on the Supreme Court. They're not all Canavas. He may not get to stay there. He certainly doesn't deserve to be there, but he alone will not be the decider. I, they think he will be, but they're... Uh, how did the emperor say it? You'll find that you are mistaken about a great many, many things. things. So I wanted to end it with this quote here that I thought, like, it was about, it was as uh, this, it's kind of a downer, but like this quote uh, by uh, Frederick Douglass um, that just like, it really struck me about what's going on today. And he says, uh, <clears throat> and quote, in thinking of America, I sometimes find myself admiring her bright blue sky, her grand old woods, her fertile fields, and her beautiful rivers, her mighty lakes, and star-crowned mountains. But my rapture is soon checked, my joy is turned to mourning, when I remember that all is cursed with the infernal spirit of slaveholding, robbery, and wrong. When I remember that with the waters of her noblest rivers, the tears of my brethren are borne to the ocean, disregarded and forgotten and that her most fertile fields drink daily of the warm blood of my outraged sisters, I am filled with unutterable loathing.